After Flashpoint, Superman's uncle Sorel escaped Krypton's destruction. Thanks to collector of words, Brainiac. Subjected to cybernetic augmentations that deranged his personality, Sorel became Cyborg Superman. Brainiac's scout for a stronger species in the universe. He attempted to conquer Earth, battling Superman and his own daughter, Kara Zorel, but somehow escaped the black hole doom that befell Brainiac. Also surviving the rebirth event, Cyborg Superman reanimated the dead Kryptonians of Fargo City and again attacked Earth, only to be defeated by Supergirl and Superman. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll take a deep dive of one of Superman's biggest nemesis, Cyborg Superman. Looking at the front of the box, we can already see that huge window wherein first thing we notice is that this figure doesn't come with a lot of accessories. I think aside from the plight stand and the art card, nothing else comes with it. On the side of the box, you will see Cyborg Superman New 52. So this is based from the New 52 era. At the back, you will see an art of Cyborg Superman from the comics. Now, if this is the New 52 Superman, I'm already seeing an issue with the figure that McFarlane created. So that's the packaging. Let's crack this thing open. Out of the box, this figure stands at 8 inches or 20 centimeters. So it is a pretty large figure. Okay, first issue I notice. Now, I must admit that I did not really follow Superman during the New 52 era because I'm a Batman person. So most of the comics that I actually bought during the New 52 are Batman. But if this is the New 52 Cyborg Superman, then it doesn't even look any closer to this figure that they created. Anyway, uh, unless McPerlin again just put a random picture from the comics instead of the uh, the art which they based this figure on, then I don't understand why they don't look the same. If you guys are aware the, that this really came, this look really came in the comics, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'm actually assuming that this is against McPerlin's way of, you know, putting the McPerlin touch on their figure. But if that is the case, then this should have been a page puncher in the page puncher line. And if they, if they will give us a cyborg Superman that is accurate to the comics, it should look like this. Anyway, putting that issue aside, let's have a look at the figure because this is as a lover of action figure. I think this is a win for McFarlane. This is actually a pretty good looking figure. So let's start with the details. So on the head sculpt, Yeah, I think McFarlane did a pretty good work in sculpting this head sculpt. Uh, I do have a little issue with the paint getting smudged under the lip, so it's silver there. Anyway, aside from that, the mold is a pretty is pretty good, and Again, when it comes to McFarlane, they are really good in making the mold, but they should really have better, you know, QC or control when it comes to their paint. I love the fact that both of his eyes are red. Gives him a very menacing look. 
Now for the articulation of the head, he does come with a single joint ball peg, uh, no, double jointed ball peg. So we can look up that far. We can look down that far. We can look side to side. So yeah, head articulation is pretty good. Now the body, I love that, again, that the Superman logo is a separate uh, part. That's actually what I love about McFarlane. And then when it comes to the robotic portion, well, this is the kind of look that McFarlane is really good at, so I have no problem with it. I'm okay with the silver that they use. Going to the articulation, it has a uh, abdominal cut and uh, waist rotation, which put together, honestly, I think, I actually think it, it, it has a pretty good range. So, yeah. Combining the, uh, the abdomen cut and the waist rotation, Range is pretty good. Now, he has two different arms because on this one, he has this huge, scary cybernetic arm, while on this one, it is shaped more like a normal fist. I love the separation the, of the silver and the blue. So again, Sculpt wise, amazing for McFarlane. And in the case of this one, I think, I think the paint, the paint was actually is actually pretty good. The paint job is actually pretty good on the hands. Now, on the articulation side again, the, I, McFarlane needs to reinvent this because it always keeps showing guts. So it has that. And then it has a cut here, double jointed elbow and double peg wrist. Now this other side looks a little different. I actually love the fact that this looks more mechanized and aside from this one, so I like the difference there. And then this huge scary arm it would have been better if if they made these fingers articulated now for the leg uh this is actually what i found a little too loud uh so i i know that mcfarlane is pretty good when it's come to sculpt but I don't know. Uh, when I actually first saw this, I thought that the body series of their Peach Puncher, uh, what's that? Ghost of Krypton. Uh, the one with the sod figure. That was actually my impression, but no, nah, it is a completely different mold. And this is actually the reason why I like, I would have loved this version more because this is more, I don't know, I like the design more of this one. This one just has so many sculpts, it just looks too loud to me. I don't know, I, I, I'm just getting tired of this over design. I'm just getting tired the side of this over design uh, that McFarlane does because it just this legs just looks too loud to me now. Now for the articulation, there's the tie. Articulation, uh, yeah, it's pretty non-existent. And then double jointed knee, ankle pivot, and toe articulation. Now, we can kick that far and we can kick back that far. So yeah, Cyborg Superman can do the split. So yeah, I give him that. And then he can also do the bend them pretty well. 
I also want to point out, I don't know if it is showing on the camera that on the on the leg part there is some dark shading that they use which is also prominent at the back so there are some there are some dark shading that they use there and then i must also give props to mcferlane for this sculpt of the torso at the back i love the fact that that spine is being shown It would have been good actually if they just, uh, you know, they just start uh, just using cloth material for the keep of all their products. But I believe that this, uh, there's been leaks on the prototype of this one. So I think this has been, this mold has been created already before. I just don't know why it was, so, it was not released. Uh, it was not really released early. And I guess maybe that's why it has this plastic cape. I'm not complaining with it, but again, the fan factor is actually increased if, uh, if, they, if they gave us a wired cape. Overall, this is still a good figure, despite of the fact that I wish that they had given us the more classic Cyborg Superman. But I guess that's what McFarlane is doing right now. They are doing more of the modern version of the characters. Uh, I don't, uh, based on the art card that was included with it, uh, this is even a completely different character as to the one that I'm aware of, which is the one from the Death of Superman. Yeah, bottom line, this is still, this is still a good figure. Uh, I love the sculpt, aside from the fact that on the bottom part, the leg part, I think, I don't know, I think the mold there is really too much. It, I just find it a little too loud. And the fact that they even gave us, gave us this art, I kind of wish that they gave, they gave us this version more because I, I like this. I actually like this version. Anyway, the good news is that it is a normal release, so it is not in the higher price point figure. So if you are a big fan of Cyborg Superman and you are okay with this uh, with with this uh, design, um, yeah, I think it's just a pretty good figure. So guys, if you've reached this part of my video, thank you for staying, and again, thanks for the support. And as always, enjoy life and keep collecting.